Welcome into the Original Gangsters podcast. I'm your host, Scott Bernstein. Um, this is another quick hitter episode uh, where I'm going to tell y'all about um, a very interesting situation that uh, has probably got lost in the shuffle of great 80s mob stories. And um, it ties into something that's going on today with a couple uh, names in the Genovese crime family that are in the news lately. But it also includes kind of a who's who of five family icons from that era. Uh, some of them hadn't even really become icons yet, but uh, I'm talking about guys like Vincent the Chin, uh, Gigante, Paul Castellano, um, Sammy the Bull Gravano. And, and Sammy the Bull um, touched on some of this uh, in an episode of his podcast a couple years ago, but I don't think that he contextualized it uh, the way that I want to based on these uh, this arrest from uh, earlier uh, this summer of uh, Frankie Di Pietro, a.k.a. Skippy, a.k.a. Frankie the Fish. He, uh, along with a number of other good fellas, were busted uh, doing diamond heists in Manhattan. Really some, you know, brazen, ballsy cowboy shit um, rolling into um, in broad daylight, rolling into uh, high-end uh, jewelry stores and, and sticking them up and coming away with millions of dollars uh, worth of merch. Uh, so Frankie Di Pietro has a brother, Rocco Di Pietro, um, and they seem to both be uh, kind of movers and shakers uh, in their 60s right now in, in the Genovese organization. According to uh, our friend John Panisi over at Sit Down Podcast, um, Sit Down News, uh, he reported that Rocco Di Pietro is, is, a cap, is a captain right now. I was able to confirm that with my people. Um, both Rocco Di Pietro and Frankie the Fish Di Pietro are convicted murderers. Um, both did prison time for homicides. Uh, and they have a father uh, who was murdered back in 1981 or disappeared. Nobody's seen him since. Uh, Carly Di Pietro, Car Carlo Di Pietro, they call him Carly or, or Kali. Um, another one of these type of guys that seem to be kind of like a gangster Forrest Gump where he was throughout the 60s and 70s was brushing up against a lot of pretty notorious, powerful guys in different crime families. Um, his brother-in-law was Frankie T, uh, Marie Russo, who uh, was a, a guy that lost his life in the banana war uh, in the Bananos, but had become a pretty big time player in the Bananos and uh, was involved in Carmine Galante's big, heroin distribution pipeline um was a guy that uh was close to the ebley brothers who were uh, tommy ebley uh, was an acting boss who ended up dying uh, ended up being killed uh, within the genovese family uh was in on the early stages of that daisy chain bootleg gasoline scam through the francis crew of the columbos uh anyway he uh and, and he owned a, a series of flea markets and swap shops with a then young uh, capo named John Gotti. Uh, when he's murdered, a, a guy named Joe Joe Glitz um, ends up taking over those rackets. It's alleged in FBI files that uh, Joe Glitz was responsible for Carly Di Pietro's disappearance and was inducted into the Genovese crime family and given all of his rackets. Uh, and then him and his, his brother, Larry Glitz, became pretty major earners for, for Chin Gigante and, and the Genovese. Uh, and in the years after Carly vanishes, his sons, 
Frankie and Rocco are making their own reputation on the streets as, you know, some real loose cannons, you know, cowboys. Um, and in Vincent Gigante's court file, there is the re uh, the recounting of this series of incidents that happened in 1982 that led to this big sit down. Um, and the reason for the sit down was that the Di Pietro brothers were planning on murdering Sammy the Bull. And at that point, Sammy the Bull was acting capo um, for his mentor, uh, Toto uh, Arello, and, you know, wasn't yet the Sammy the Bull that was in all the tabloids and headlines and People magazine. Uh, but within the orbit of the mafia, you know, Sammy the Bull was a guy that people knew was a was a as a was a rising star and a force to be reckoned with. So it all started with the Di Pietros were underneath a guy named uh, Georgie Rush uh, Zapola, who's the father of a Lucchese capo right now, Georgie Neck Zapola. Um, but this was the original uh, George uh, Georgie Zapola. They called him Georgie Rush, and Georgie Rush who was running around with the, or the Di Pietro brothers were running around with him, uh, gets into a beef with a uh, Gravano crew member, Nikki Cowboy, uh, Mormondo. And Nikki Cowboy was a cowboy. So he had this, this kind of like Wild West going on um, with these, you know, whether you're whether you're talking about the Gambinos or the Genovese and, and they clash these, you know, the clash of the Cowboys and uh, Georgie Rush ends up taking a shot and wounding Nikki Cowboy. And then word starts to matriculate uh, onto the streets that the Pietro brothers want to kill Sammy the Bull and a guy named Pete Scarpacci who was a Genovese, maybe a soldier, at least an associate, um, who was friendly with Sammy the Bull, delivers the news to, to Gravano that these young Di Pietro brothers who had just lost their dad were, were gunning for him. And that he was already upset over the fact that Georgie Rush had taken a shot at his, his guy, Nicky Cowboy. So a sit down has to be held. And you had Sammy the Bull go to Toto. Toto goes to Paul Castellano, who was the boss of bosses at that point. Um, and in order for Castellano to get word to the chin, who was behind the scenes, you know, he wasn't the household name that he became. You know, Fat Tony Salerno was the street boss, the guy that was taking, you know, the lightning rod to take all the heat and get all the headlines in 19... This is, this is the spring, early summer of 1982. Um, but Gigante's the one who's going to represent the Genovese at this at the sit-down. And Castellano gives the word to Tommy Bellotti, um, who... Three years later, he'd be killed with alongside uh, to set up a to set up a um, a meeting of the minds. So you had a sit down take place in I believe it was June of 1982, where Sammy the Bull, Paul Castellano, Toto Arello, and Chin Gigante um, are all there, and the Di Pietro brothers were their, their murder contracts were greenlit at that meeting or at that sit down. Um, Sammy the Bull told the story to the chin. The chin says, you know, there's nothing I can do. Protocol should allow you uh, and your family to take vengeance on the DiPietro brothers. But this was the chin. The chin says, but I want you to know that I'm going to kill your friend Pete Scrapacci, um, who broke rank and 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 eclipsed the chain of command. 
he should have never came to you with our family's problems. He should have came to me if he had an issue with what the Di Pietros were doing. And because he came to you and not to me, I'm going to kill him. Uh, and then the chin says, or I should say Sammy says to the chin, let's play a little wheel of fortune here. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's play, let's make a deal. Uh, I'll abstain from killing the DiPietros at a, a request really of, of the chin who had told him um, early in the meeting that the, the, the DiPietros weren't acting of sound mind over the last couple of years because they had lost their father and what, how, tragic it was and how how much it was affecting them affecting them and that sammy should kind of know that uh, as as you know kind of backstory and uh sammy kind of sensed that the chin had a soft spot in his heart for the the dipietro brothers and sammy says well i'll spare the lives of the dipietros if uh you spare the life of my friend pete scarpacci and Gigante agreed, and he, according to this court filing, uh, commented to Sammy, who, again, at this time, hadn't become the Sammy the Bull that we would all know, uh, said to him, or well, first said to him how impressive he was in, in the uh, kind of the negotiations or the back and forth of the sit-down, um, how he carried himself, how he was impressed with how he carried himself, and uh, how he thought. And I, I believe he made a comment to uh, the people that he was with, his, his, the higher ups, the, the Castellanos uh, and Orellos, about how this is a guy that you, you know, you should be fast tracking towards towards leadership. You know, it it didn't happen in the way that maybe he thought it was going to happen at the time. Where uh, with Paul Castellano, uh, you know, he definitely made him a made him a capo, but 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 Gotti and and Gravano had to kill Castellano to take total power and uh the fallout didn't affect the DiPietros, um but it did affect georgie rush and uh georgie rush ends up or parts of georgie rush end up on a beach in long island in july of 1982 around the july 4th holiday uh georgie rush's head and hand uh pop up on the beach he had allegedly been tortured uh, he it's interesting because he was the made guy at that point the deep petros were just two young um nobodies who who had a dad that had been somebody who had been slain and they were really acting a fool i think it was thought that maybe georgie rush was setting the tone allowing them to act that way and uh but Georgie Rush is the one who, who paid the price. Now, his son, Georgie Nexapola, is the New Jersey, allegedly is the a capo in New Jersey um, for the Lucchese's right now, took over for the Pernas. Um, and then Sammy the Bull went on to do what he did. You know, they take him and him and Gotti take power. He flips on Gotti, becomes the most, you know, infamous cooperator in mob history other than Joe Falacci. And uh, then the chin rises to become, you know, probably the, premier boss of the in in new york in the, the last quarter of the of the uh, 20th century and then let's uh, update you with, with the, the di pietros right now frankie the fish A.K. skippy uh he, he's looking at you know time in this in this case he had gone to the lucchese family for a while uh as an associate in the uh, late 80s early 90s in the 90s and then uh was was nailed on a murder case did in 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 98 i believe um or maybe it was i'm getting my dates all messed up but it ends up doing about 18 years i think he came out in 2016 and rocco di pietro who had done a pretty big chunk of a, of a sentence for a, a a crazy murder um in a year or two after it was around the same time uh, I think it was about six months or a year after the incident with Sammy the Bull, uh, Rocco Di Pietro, who had a reputation as a you know quick-tempered, quick trigger, uh, is, is in a bar 
some he's yelling at somebody over something. A guy who was just a, a young filmmaker, I believe, tells him to calm down. Uh, what are you getting so upset about? And he tells him to mind his own business. This is coming from Rocco Di Pietro. The guy, I think, cursed him. And then Rocco Di Pietro takes out his gun and, and kills this guy. Uh, what's interesting right now about Rocco is after talking to my people um, on both sides of, of the law, it seems like Rocco has done a really, in terms of organized crime, it's done a great job of reinventing himself and rebranding himself. And at one point he was known as this off the chain crazy kid uh, is now trusted and is known as being very level headed and a guy that uh, is a diplomat, a guy that is tasked with uh, representing the Genovese um, with other crime families has a lot of respect as a, as a mediator and is kind of the polar opposite of what he was when he was a young guy. I can't, I don't know if I can say the same thing about Frankie the fish uh, cause he's 65, 66 years old and he's going in with, with guns blazing into uh, jewelry stores in the middle of Manhattan, you know, in the middle of the afternoon. But uh, it, it, it's, when, when you know the, what's going on now in 2023 and you can look back 40 years ago and see that these guys came, you know, as Junior Soprano might have said, a cunt hair away from uh, not making it, uh, it, you know, through the 1980s. And if it wasn't for Sammy the Bull and the Chin um, bartering over, uh, you know, over, over potential dead bodies, um, we wouldn't be here to be talking about the Di Pietro. So uh, shout out to Sammy the Bull. If he already did most of this, I don't think he did. But if he did, I'm just, you know, it's my nod to him. If he didn't, I hope I could shed some uh, some new light, some new perspective on this. Um, it's just, it's, it's, it's riveting when you, uh, when you think about who was involved in this and uh, where they are now and who they were then. And I just stumbled upon this in in, uh, in the Chin's uh, court file. Uh, someone pointed out, and and uh, I, I thought it made uh, for a good quick hitter. So for Benny Behind the Glass, I'm Scott Bernstein. Jimmy will be back for the full-length episode later this week. OG Pod out. Mm-hmm.